All right, guys, some of you know that I'm a school teacher. I teach science at a local high school, and I wanted to bring physics into an explanation uh, for once. So I, I do love science. I love tech. I love tennis in terms of there's a lot of physics behind behind it. When I taught myself tennis, I had really good players that I watched as a high schooler because I started in high school, and they would be up here, they would be reaching, and all this stuff, and I'm like, well, it's got to be for a reason, right? So the, I'm just trying to give you guys a reason that maybe will help you understand why players do it, and maybe that gives you a better understanding of it to do it, okay? So we're going to talk about centrifugal force, and I'm going to use Del Potro. He had, I believe, over a 100 mile an hour forehand. He's got the fastest recorded forehand that has ever been hit. So why does a guy like that, well, hit it so hard? Well, he's 6'7". So obviously in your head, you got to be thinking, well, length matters. Bubba Watson is a great driver. Well, he's a very tall guy, right? So we got to remember that the, the players, the length of their swing allows them to have more pace. And here's my analogy before I get into the tennis part. If you're riding a bike with me and we're riding, and I have a very um, low gear, and I'm riding and my gear is like, I'm riding and it's like one pedal takes a long time. It's a very long pattern for the chain to go around versus you have a high gear and you're doing this. You know, you're, you're pedaling this fast, right? I'm gonna be going as fast or faster than you with a longer one, right, than a short one. Same thing as a, um, like a rower. I, I like rowing and my length of pull is very long. I'm built to row, long arms, lanky body, I can reach, right? So the whole idea is that the length helps you create a lot of effortless power. So what I'm not saying grow to be six foot seven like Del Potro, but kind of learn also why he can hit the ball hard is he also lengthens his shot. Now I'm not going to talk about spin because he does hit flat and everything, but I want you to notice that if you want to hit the ball hard, I want you to try something. Instead of doing your normal racket, you know, back and everything, I want you to try to do what he does is bring his elbow up and keep his racket off his body and then notice that this is a very long swing now and he can really push through that ball so the point of the ball is here and he's going to put his arm way out so he can make contact with that ball and really crush it so if you really have time now this is something that you only do when the ball is hit soft you can time it because it's really hard to time this but that's kind of why del potro can hit 100 and some 10 i don't know what it was 100 mile an hour forehand well, he can't do it on his backhand. Why? Look at the link, right? You cannot have the same centrifugal force on a two-hander and on a back, you, you would argue, okay, what about a one-hander? Yeah, a lot of players like Wawrinka can crush his one-hander because he's got the link, but also you gotta think it's a strength thing. So this is what's doing the power there to pushing through, not only the legs and the hips, which is not as strong as the forward motion of your chest and your uh, back going forward. So there's another, there's other reasons to it too. But the main thing I want you to think about is when the ball is coming, really reach out and push through and see how much power you can get by just reaching. This goes with the serve too. So if I have a big point or I'm feeling like I need to hit a big serve, I don't increase my speed per se. I lengthen my swing. So I'm going to really stretch out. So notice I'm stretching my arm out. And I'm going to really go for a big, long swing. And that allows a lot of effortless power because just like the bike chain, I'm doing a long pattern of swing rather than a short one. So you can get the same power as a long one, which is a lot easier to time because it's slower than doing this. You get the same amount of power on both shots. Which one's easier to control? Which one's easier on your arm, right? And I remember, I guess the last thing I want to take away is when I was at the US Open watching someone, I'd watch from the side angle and I would watch a player hit and I'm like, wow, that player is really crushing the ball, but I didn't even realize it. So what I mean by that is the player was doing this and just hitting just like that, maybe a little bit faster, like that. And I'm like, wow, that's they're barely hitting. And then I would watch the ball and the ball just flew. I'm like, holy cow, those guys are crushing the ball and it doesn't and they make it look easy. Well, Part of that, there's a lot to it, I get it. But the whole point is they know centrifugal force. The longer their swing out, the better. And that's why TV doesn't show that. They swing so fast that you think they go like this because that's all you see is this. But in fact, they reach out. Their contact point is here. Federer does it very, very well. His arm is reaching out to that ball, reaching out and using that link. And that's why 
Del Potro, for example, can crush forehands. All right. So I'm trying to get you guys to think outside the box and find ways to improve your game or just experiment. You never know what might click for you. So give it a shot and hopefully that'll add a little power to mainly your forehand. Good luck.